What's up guys, this is Share talking, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be making a full review for the Mysterious Exploration Romancing Festival banner that has Beauty as the main character. But to be honest, this should be called Romancing Festival Tatiana banner. Beauty is a buffer healer and party booster that works pretty well on current game. Tatiana is a heavy nuker that can outshine Leon for pure blunt damage. And we have Shroud that is a damage dealer buffer in the buffer so we're going to start talking about tatiana she is the most interesting character here we have 127 percent str that's very high and she has high base str as well and runs is 80 percent but we was 90 percent much better and that's a very safe value she has 90 percent agility that's not an issue and her dex rt is okay Intelligence is on 70% because she can inherit the buff skills, but it will only work if you are bringing buffers and you are allowed to buff because 70% is not good enough for hard challenges. Her love and charisma suffer a little, but that's not gonna make much difference. She starts the fight with 30% damage increase at all times, then she fills all of her overdrive gauge. That's right. And then on the start of a turn, if her overdrive gauge is full, it will be on turn 1. She grants herself this weak stamp for 2 turns. Weak Stamp is a very nice passive, that when she lands a weak attack, that means that the enemy is weak to the attack that Tatiana is using, well, mostly blunt. She would then follow up with Triple Stamp two times, but what exactly is Triple Stamp? It's her skill number 3, that has deep power and hits 3 times with blunt damage, but it's random, so if there are multiple enemies, you don't know who Tatiana is gonna hit. But if there's just one enemy, this doesn't matter. Okay, 3 hits with the power and each new hit will give her an attack boost. If this is your command, using it as a 10 BP cost skill, you can get up to 20% attack boost per hit. But on rank 1, it's just 15% as it will be for her chase. But double times a skill that costs 10 BP as a chase, that's insane, right? Yes, it is because it keeps stacking boosts and damage will scale super high. But now, if you use her Overdrive Gorge, then on the next turn, if your Overdrive Gorge is not full, she will just grant herself this end of turn OD Gorge up small. That gives her 15 points of Overdrive Gorge. And here we need to discuss the real effect of Weak Stamp. She gives this every turn when she's on Overdrive, and it lasts for two turns. What does that mean? It means that on turn 2, you have two weak stamps. Meaning that if you attack a target that is weak to Tatiana skill, she will follow up with four times triple stamp. Each triple stamp has three hits, right? Meaning that she has guaranteed 12 chases. On Remembrance Battle, the enemies are always weak to Blunt. On fights, you have to pick your fights, okay? But even then, that's insane amount of damage. Imagine, it's like 12 bullets from Leon when he got released it, but without having to load any bullet and doing that from start. That's Tatiana for you. So, she's very special in a way that you don't want to use her overdrive gauge unless it's on the end of the fight or if you have um, a special mechanic that will increase your overdrive damage, like people... Subir, Vagnas, Barthelemy, but even then, you can choose right the characters that will be used on Tatiana's squad, and you don't want to go for full overdrive damage. But then, if she attacks on overdrive, she grants herself a defense boost that decreases damage taken by 30%, lasts for 3 turns, can stack if she gets into overdrive, use it again, recover her HP by around 1.5,000. There was a problem on JP, she didn't have any damage reduction passive, so people wanted to use her overdrive because of that, to get the extra defense, but in global they gave her a 25% damage reduction, and that is amazing because you don't need to use overdrive anymore, she can be there just attacking with 12 chases and use overdrive just before you want to kill the enemy, or like I said, if you have overdrive boosters in the party, you can still decide to use it. But it really depends. Usually you just want to keep attacking without using overdrive. Then by the end of a turn she gets 2 EP, so she is a 5 EP per turn character. She also has maximum voltage, so 30% heat up every turn for a max of 150. So you have a max of 180 by turn 5. So, doesn't take too much to get full potential. But she will be doing amazing damage right from turn 2 onwards. 
Skill number one is Healing Beat. It's a single target blunt attack that has the power for free and recovers HP by around 250. Not very useful, but it gives 23 points of OG Gauge. That's very similar to a normal attack that gives 25. For an extra healing, that's very nice. The second skill, Light Up Deadly Hit. It's an AoE blunt attack that before attacking grants the user this attack boost that increases damage potential by 50% for two turns. That's right. And then she launches the attack that has a power. Okay, this felt like it was interesting to use it before you chase, but I did many test runs here, and in the end, using Light Up Dead Hit twice, like saving 20 BP and use this twice to get all your chases with two attack boosts, was essentially weaker than using either Triple Stamp twice in a row, or light up that he hit and then triple stamp. That had a very similar damage output. So it's better if you have multiple targets, so it's free damage, but if there's just one target, you can just use triple stamp if you want. Like we already discussed it, three hits of the power, each new hit will give you an attack boost, and using this as a your command actually give you 20, 20, and 20% 20 attack boost for a total of 60% that will then affect all of your chase attacks. That's why it is uh, good. Uh, the difference that the light up daddy hit attack boost lasts for two turns, so you could decide to use light up daddy hit and then triple stamp because you still get all the effects, but in the end it doesn't really matter much. So Tatiana has a uh, full cycle of waiting on start of fight. If you have buffers it's better to wait. And then on turn uh, 3, you can use Triple Stamp twice in a row. Or, if you want, you can also use, for example, uh, Triple Stamp on turn 2, and then on turn 3, you still have it enough. Depending on the length of a fight, Tatiana can be amazing. And she already rivals Leon. Summer Leon is only special for 10 turns, and she works for as much as you want. But the enemy needs to be weak to Tatiana for it to work well. While Liam will work for any type of content since he gets all of those bullets without any problem. And he's super strong as well with that inheritance of anti-material shot if you have his past style. Overall, Leon is easier to use. But Tatiana will be doing more damage in the long run. Now, there is a trick to make your Tatiana even better. For example, she can do damage on neutral as well if you inherit her attack that has elemental and that one comes from Halloween style there is surprise steady that it's an AoE attack that has shadow so if she lands an attack versus enemies weak to shadow she will still chase and if you have her debuffer style with multi hits she has this attack that has blunt and cold but she has also a way to do neutral with her chases, but also trigger via code. So, two extra ways to make Tatiana do damage. But I don't know if you want to use her on those scenarios because neutral damage is not that high, but for people without that many damage dealers, it will work. And, well, you can also inherit a very nice skill from her Halloween style. Sucker Strike, it's free and can debuff the enemy STR by 15% on max level. And it gives 25 points of Overdrive Gauge versus 23 of her natural skill 1. But the good thing here is that if you have buffers in your party and you are debuffing the enemy, it's always better than just using a skill that has very small healing. But nothing else here matters much if you think about that. She won't be easily debuffing the enemies, but you could theoretically inherit any of her uh, two different skills here, Spin Pressure or Great Dolphin Show. Especially Great Dolphin Show because of the cold element. Okay, so Tatiana has very nice damage potential, to the point of just competing with Kihachi. That's right, she is the only one that can compete with Kihachi right now, and that is awesome. For blunt, and especially using clubs, a weapon that doesn't have many damage dealers. It's either Mask Revenge Style or Bokon, Paulus, or Tatiana. All the other ones are just not strong. So having Tatiana will allow you to clear all Remembrance battles with ease, if you have support at least. And she will be relevant for all the 
foreseeable future for enemies weak to blunt. So a very good character to have in a recommended pool that we receive a 5 out of 5 OP grade in my new grading system. Well, Tatiana has a new style on JP that does not replace this one, it's actually very different but can give you good inheritance. For example, this one has a 2 hit attack that's cheap and this recovery skill that also gives you a passive that when attacked will be buffing entrance and will of all other surviving allies. Then she has a skill that buffs multiple status, then gives attack boost, defense boost, guard up, and morale up small. A lot of different effects, yeah, and can be used if you want in the place of the third skill. But I do believe that it's better to just start the fight with using this skill here to recover and give this effect that can be just an extra, but she's more of a healer with extra support. The next character will be Shrall, I'll protect the village. This guy is an hybrid, but he doesn't suffer much, 120% STR and 120% intelligence. We have 77% endurance and 80% will. Will could be higher, well, he may uh, give you some head H's in some fights. 92% agility is good enough and love and charisma are just a little below the average, but nothing that will affect the performance. He starts the fight with 12 VP and when attacking he has many different effects. First, he grants himself this attack boost that increases damage potential by 50% that lasts for 5 turns and it stacks. He will also be buffing his STR and intelligence by 20%. It's awesome that he has this attack boost that lasts for 5 turns because it's when he attacks and he has chase on overdrive and he can inherit a skill that has 2 attacks as well. Then he will grant himself this end of turn recover of 1 BP and end of turn generation of 15 points of overdrive gauge, meaning that he will get 3 stacks of this by the end of turn 3 or sooner, by the end of turn 2 if you are using the inheritance skill. So you get extra 45 points of overdrive and you get 6 BP per turn no matter what he does. Then, when activating Overdrive, he would chase with Blaze Javelins. That's the skill that I will be discussing. It's a single target attack with pierce and heat damage that attacks random enemies three to four times with just E power. And when the attack lands, rinse the target, heat defense down. Decreasing the defenses to heat by 20% lasts for two turns and stack. Each hit will perform the heat defense down and it's not related to RNG or to the, his intelligence, it will always land. So, each new hit will do more damage, but sadly it's between 3 to 4 times. Remember that we had left fork, a 13 BP attack that hits 5 times always, while buffing STR that also scales the damage. I wish this was cheaper or we had a guarantee 4 hits, but that's okay. Shock can still build up a lot of damage because of all of those attack boost and status buff that he can get. Now, uh, when you are using Blaze Javelin as a chase, uh, the debuff value will be lower. Each hit will only debuff the defense of heat by 15%. Now, when attacked, damage will be reduced by 30% at all times. He then has a permanent 30% damage increase. Then he also has his heat up, increasing damage potential by 15%. But triggers 10 times per battle for a max of 150%. And then the permanent one, 180 from just this passive alone. Well, I would much prefer the heat up that gives 30% every turn to reach max potential on 5 turns instead of having to wait more. But if you compare by turn 8, you have the same values as the other passive, but you have extra beyond turn 8. Then, on start of battle, he also grants Determination to everyone. Determination is a passive uh, that will be attached that when your HP is not full, well, in hard challenges, most of the time it won't be full, your damage will increase by 15%, damage taken will then be reduced by 10%, and when you are attacked, you'll be buffing your own endurance and will by 5%. 5%. It's not much, but it's both endurance and will. You could say that this type of passive started with the latest victor. That he will be buffing all surviving allies, endurance, will, and charisma by 5% when he was hit. And then now he got perfected by Sirius. 
but Sirius has just one problem. It needs to be attacked by spells in order to trigger the will effect, but it's 15%. The only good thing about Trout is that he will trigger that, no matter the type of skill or spell that it's used. It. And determination is better when the enemies are using AoEs, in my opinion. Because if it's using too many single targets, then you're not going to get much out of it. But if it's an AoE, everyone gets 5% endurance and will. And in some fights you are allowed to buff, extra buffs are welcome. But all in all, you still get that 10% damage reduction and 15% damage increase when your HP is not full. So those are the passives. Then we have the first spell, Flaming Spear. It's single target, hit and pierce, and we recover the user's HP by around 250. It needs a spear with a fire element. We have one now in the event, so you can upgrade to Triple S, and I recommend if you get Trop, it is worth. The second spell is Bird Song, and it has full AoE damage with C power, costs 7 VP only, and has a chance to buff the enemy's intelligence by 30%. Whoa, 30 is a big number, right? It also has a chance to stun, and cures all other surviving allies from sleep. Because when you sing like a bird, you awaken to sleep. Okay, but the good thing here is that Shaw will eventually reach 6 BP per turn. You can keep casting Bird Song and be your main debuffer if you really need that. And still offering more, like the 10% damage reduction when not on full HP, and all the extra 5% endurance and will buff when being hit, if that's something that will make you survive or resist ailments, it's worth. Then we have Blaze Javelins that we already discussed. This is a spear attack, meaning that it's based on STR. And you want to use this skill usually on overdrive turns. But now let's discuss the past version of Shroud that gives access to an inheritance. This was released alongside Muse, and the skill we are talking about is Burning Descent. It is a spell on the first hit and then a skill on the second hit. So you need a Flame Spear, and you have access to one during the event. It's AoE with Heat and Pierce damage, just the power with the first hit, cost 9. And when the attack lands, there is a chance to debuff the enemy's endurance by 30%. Then, after attacking, he's gonna use Erupting Flames. And Erupting Flames is C power, Pierce and Heat again. So, you will have two hits, and this will fuel in line to either a triple S or 4S attack depending if you land that endurance debuff and if you are using a triple S weapon or not. For 9 BP, okay, nice. But the good thing is that Shao will then be much stronger because he will trigger two times the attack boost because it's two attacks. So 50% damage increase becomes 100% damage increase. He will then buff his STR and intelligence twice. He will already get 2 BP by the end of turn 1 if you are using that skill. And 2 stacks of that OD gauge up. So it's a good skill to use on turn 1, and even to use it as your main skill if you want. For 9 BP you are getting some good damage, and you will be stacking to even beat Blaze Javelins unless you are on Overdrive. On Overdrive I would suggest to use Blaze Javelins because you then have many of the heat defense down effects after you build up lots of attack boosts and status buffs. So Shaw has good damage and has some party support. You don't need to have any other inheritance with him, but there is the Divine Lancer skill that when you amplify becomes a triple S attack that has attack boost and can debuff the dex by 20%. If you need to debuff dex that can be helpful. Now, still speaking about Burning Descent, you can actually use this skill for farming. With a triple S weapon, Shaw can be used on a Dragon Stance EX formation. It will be needed or else he will not have enough BP. And then he will attack with Burning Descent and Eruption Flames, doing around 380,000 damage at least. He will solo all stages where the enemies are weak to Pierce or Heat, and there are multiple enemies. He can replace Merlot Syrah, Tomo, and... Well, he's still a character that can be used outside of farming, it's just an extra. And if you have his tower style, you can inherit Windmill Plus. And this one is nice because every time you attack, you then get that 50% damage increase. Sadly, it costs 9 BP to counter, while he has only 6 BP generation. 
You can also paralyze Real Queen with Flame Whip or stun with Sweep versus Kazinsi. Nothing else matters and Trow is kind of easy to use. There's no much secrets. If you have the inheritance, use it. If you don't, you can just keep cycling between Flaming Spear and Blaze Javelins in most cases. Or if you need that extra buff, you can use Bard Song to keep buffing the enemy intelligence. Shao is very strong, but not essential. It will be a nice character to get if he drops. And I will give him a 4.0 out of 5 in my new grading system. He's not strong against Subir for Pierce. But for heat damage, I don't think he has that many competition. It's all about Hippolyta that will do more damage than Shaw, but not by much. g 6 cg is useful as well, but I think Shaw is stronger. The last character will be Bune, and she is a mage with lots of party support. We have 82% endurance, but 104% will. That's very nice. Her intelligence is 120%, while her agility is 94. Not really an issue because she has fast skills. Love is super high because she can inherit recovery and can already cast recovery skills. Now, she starts the fight with 11 BP to use a skill that she has available on turn 1. And she will then grant 3 different effects that will be permanent in battle. Heat up by 30% to the whole squad. That's right, it's a big number. 10% defense up to the crease damage taken by 10%, and she will also apply this end of turn recover. That will be recovering around 300 HP by the end of turn, every turn. But then, on turn 5, and then again on turn 10, she will trigger all the same effects once more. So you will have then 2 stacks, and then eventually 3 stacks. Sadly, it takes too much to have the third stack, but by turn 5 you already have something. And this was designed for new challenges, because many enemies will get hit up as the fight keeps going. So you are actually having this to fight those types of enemies. If they get stronger, you also get more defensive. See how it works. And having three different recovers by the end of a turn, it's like at least 900 per turn. So nice, just takes time to build. By start of turn, she then buffs all surviving allies, agility and intelligence by 15%. Agility and intelligence, it's a combo for mages, so that they go first, they do more damage and have better chances to debuff. Also helps a little bit for martial artists, but mostly mages. She also recovers 2 VP, she's a 5 VP per turn character. When she attacks, she also has a chase called Slash Gust. That's not really a strong skill, it's just a power, and when the attack lands, can apply defense down to the target, that would then decrease the defense by 10% only, and only for that turn. Really, really bad. Wish it was something better. She then has 30% damage increase at all times, and then when attacked, damage will reduce it by 30%. So, for damage, she will be buffing herself and everyone else's, and starts the fight with at least 60% damage increase. Not really a character used for damage, it's more of multi-purpose. Skill number one is called Shade Ball. Single target shadow damage, but it uses Wind Element and grants the target Morale Down Small, decreasing damage taken by 15%, lasts for 2 turns, with just 1 DP cost, so almost free to decrease damage taken. Nice! Then the second one is Harvest Breath. It's a fast support skill that will give you this attack boost and a defense boost. It will decrease damage taken by 15%, and then boost the damage by 20%. Okay, so they last for 2 turns. The attack boost is not really essential, the defense boost is nice, but it's 15%. Okay, she then also buffs all surviving online status ailments by large effect. Because this is 5vp, you can actually use it every turn. Sadly, the effects from attack and defense boost only last for 2 turns, but ailment resistance buffs last for 4 and they will be stacking. And now it's where we discuss Bune Utility since she clashes with some people, like she clashes with Enya. Because Enya can give you status buff when she attacks, she can give you defense boost, but her version is medium, decreasing damage taken by 25%, lasts for 3 turns, and also stack, but it's very costly. She also has a tropical refresh skill that she can cast, and then you can heal by the end of turn, and remove debuffs. She also gives heat up, but it's not as good, it's just 15%. But she also clashes a lot with Liz. Well, Liz has that 
awesome Dragon's Blasting that gives 1 MP to everyone, recovers HP, and then defense boost of 25% and can stack 4 times. This has been used in many hard challenges and it's awesome. So, those two meta units are now being uh, used in a lot of different scenarios, but Beauty is trying to get a little bit of Ben and add a little bit of Key. Remember Key? Well, Key has the best ailment resistance setup. She gets that very large effect on start of turn, and then she can give you even more large via Pure Veil. That also buffs Endurance and Will. Now, what Beauty gives that they don't? Nothing. It's just a mix. But if you can remove one of them to use Beauty, maybe in Terra, since she is giving a little bit of everything. Maybe you can remove Liz or Anya. Or you can remove Key, but Key is not as useful as she was before, but it still works. And I say that Yuden is more useful for those that skip it some of these units instead of those that already have them, because there's nothing wrong with those units, in my opinion. Uh, some may say that they want to use a different cycle, like start with Harvest Breath, because you want that ailment resistance, and then use Shade Ball, and then when you have enough BP, use skill number 3. That's called Fertile Gust. This is a slash attack, 11 BP cost, double S power, that then buffs Endurance and Mew by 30% and gives 1 BP recover to all surviving allies. I really like this skill, it should have been buffed, it should have that ailment resistance buff as well, because sometimes you need extra will and extra ailment resistance, that's what Key does sometimes. And if you compare this to Asilu's skill, look, Asilu's skill also costs 11, it's just weaker. But it gives 1 BP to everyone as well, buffs all status by 25% and gives this passive or 25% chance to evade. It's much better than Bune's version. So you either have an uh, inferior skill for buffing and BP generation or a hybrid attack defense boost with ailment resistance. I would say that this part is kind of a little more similar to Labelle. Labelle has this skill. Uh, that we all know, Breezy Foot Bath, that gives the attack boost, removes the buffs, and then she can also heal in some turns, right? Fuel Overdrive Gorge, Cleans. But if you have Labelle in the party, you probably not want to have Beauty together. You'll be using different squads. But they don't clash directly. Ailment resistance buffs will stack with other sources, and attack boosts will also stack with other sources. It's just that it may be a little bit overkill. As for inheritance, this beauty doesn't have that many options. You could use her for debuffs, but we have better debuffers now. And this style here, we have Purple Haze Coat that will give her a buff to endurance, agility, intelligence, and will, a defense up, and a heat up. So she has a very good start and extra defense. Then there is this skill that has damage block, but her BP generation is not that great, and one damage block is not that great. Imagine we have Al Kaiser now that gives you evasion and lots of damage reduction. Then there is also Gold Dragon Breeze that could be used if you want. You can use Bune a little bit more of a healer with that end of turn healing, but an extra healing and also entrance will and charisma buffing. But it's not as good as the newest matchwork anyway. And a uh, single target healing that could also be used as in Terrace, seeing Emergency Bottom, but I don't really feel like this is useful. There is Sky Convalescence, that is a 2 LP recover, but right now in the game we have other cards that can recover, like Matriarch, that can keep recovering since she recharges a skill every 5 turns. So this one is using LP, keeping you in danger. I don't really feel like building has interesting options right now. She's more of a replacement for people that didn't get the characters that I mentioned it and wants a little bit of everything. She may work well for Firebringer, but it's not an essential character, and I believe as a buffer debuffer, a 4.0 out of 5. But easy to skip if you have Liz and Enya. Well, Beauty has a new style on JP where she is more of a damage dealer, but also has access to action order increase, can also boost the attack of people, has many chains attacks while still having good enough sustain, but was not graded so well, I don't know if she will be making an impact in the future. But now back to the banner image, is this banner worth summoning for in my opinion? Yes, I have pulled it on it and got 
Tatiana and Shaw. Stop it there because it won't benefit too much from building. I would say it deserves a Silver Plus award, even if you don't need beauty, but if you do have an utility for her, it could be graded even higher for you. Tatiana is a pretty safe investment by being an extremely powerful damage dealer for a weapon type that has no competition, sad. Then we have Shaw, that is a respectable damage dealer, also a farmer when you need. And you need that can replace some of the meta units, but it's not really better. So, it's a banner where all units have some utility. And I do think those are worth pulling for, especially if you have the gems. If you don't, uh, just get Tatiana and get out of the banner. And if you have Summerlin and don't want to spend, it's also okay. With all that said, this is my opinion. What is yours? Please say here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. And I want to see you soon in the next video or live stream. Goodbye.